Hey everybody, so a slightly different format from me today. I get a lot of viewer comments that I never get round to making videos about, so I thought I might try and make a weekly video in future, taking some viewer comments and looking at the bikes that they want me to compare. So this video here is the year 2020, week 40, which has actually just gone because I've missed my own deadline and it's now week 41. But I've built the stack anyway, so we might as well go through it and, uh, well, here we go. So first up from Rudy, hey, do you mind making a comparison for endurance bikes? Endurace, Damane, Arube and Defy. Okay, so here's the Endurace CFSL Disc 8 Durace Di2. And I went for the price range that if I was thinking about one of these bikes that I would probably pay for one, the sort of 3k mark. Not a terrible weight, I don't think, for a moderately priced carbon endurance bike. So one of the things that endurance bikes are about is comfort, obviously, which gets played out in the geometry, which we'll see in a sec when we compare it to its stable mate, the Ultimate. But clearly on this bike, Canyon are using their fancy seat post technology here to add some flex into the seat post, which looks very jazzy. So let's compare it to the Ultimate. And you'll see how the geometry changes from the Endurace to the Ultimate. You're clearly lower down at the front and stretched out into a more aero position. And at the rear of the bike, the Ultimate again pulls you back further, stretch you out. Apart from that, the rear is very similar. Bottom bracket height, very similar. Interestingly, when I compared these two bikes, I put money on the fact that the Endurace would have a longer wheelbase than the Ultimate. But actually, the Ultimate has a slightly longer wheelbase, with the front axle being slightly further forwards. I was quite surprised by that. So there we go, that's the Endurace and the Ultimate. Speaking of the Ultimate, Canyon have released their new lineup for 2021. And of course, we were hoping for a nice new bike from Canyon, maybe like the new breed of bike with the integrated cable and a bit more aero tubing. But it wasn't to be, and it's basically just a rejig of the old Ultimate, so that's a bit of a shame. However, this popped up on my feed the other day. GCN have got a live and exclusive Canyon launch tomorrow, it being the 5th of October today. So presumably that's the new Air Road, so I look forward to that. Speaking of which, this is the new Canyon Air Road, which was ridden in the Tour de France by Movistar. I think Arkea Samzik rode it as well. And how many stages did they win? Uh, none, unfortunately. So Canyon were probably a bit upset by that. However, I would love to talk to the Movistar riders about how they got on with the access group set that they changed over to from the campy rim brake setup that they would normally have. See how they felt about that. In better news for Canyon, Van der Poel managed to take the overall at the Bink Bank Tour. Looks like he was riding the new air road as well. And he did that by winning the last stage quite convincingly in a 50k solo breakaway, which was a pretty good watch, actually. Now, I do wonder whether the slow development at Canyon has got anything to do with the fact that now they're making, or planning to make, or conceptualising, I'm not sure really, little electric pedal cars. I guess they're pedally. Have to wait and see, but it's obviously distracted them from making bikes, which for me is a shame. Okay, so moving back on with uh, Rudy's comment, let's compare the Endurace to the Damane. Is fading between the two and we can immediately see that the Damane is a good bit longer in the wheelbase slacker longer chain stays so this bike is going to be I'd have said this was moving towards gravel territory I guess there's no definitive line between all these bikes what I would say is this one is heavy 9.3 kilograms in comparison to the 8 for the Canyon a little bit more expensive and this is only mechanical and the Endurace is Di2 so that's quite a big deal really I think I'd stick to the Canyon there just comparing the Damane against its racing brethren the Amonda you can clearly see the rider being stretched out there so next up in the list was the Roubaix now I already had one of these dual race versions in my stack library so to try and save a bit of time and actually get this video made I've used that which of course is coming in at nine and a half grand and because it's specialized they don't let us know how much these weigh so I have no clue but comparing between the two the geometry's fairly close I guess although the future shock does seem to lift the bars up quite high I think this has got the sort of gull wing bars on it as well might be wrong there and the specialized 
rather than having the split seat post like the Canyon has actually got this sort of wiggle room here. Now if my memory serves me right, the seat clamp is lower down for the seat post so that it can flex back and forth in this space here. So that specialised answer to the comfort question. A bit of bounciness at the front and a bit of wiggly seat post. So how about the Giant Defy? Well, here we go, here's the comparison between the two. The Defy is more expensive than the Canyon. It's a much more compact frame. Quite a different stance at the front. Bottom bracket's about the same height, but we've got the longer chain stays on the Giant and the dropped seat stays. I think this is how Giant are building in a bit of compliance at the back here. Very beefy stem on the Defy. Not quite sure how I feel about all this. It doesn't look like it's hiding any of the cables or anything. But then the junction box of the Di2 is a bit messy on the Canyon. So I was quite interested to compare the Defy against the TCR, the new TCR. So that looks like that. So as per what we've seen in the other comparisons with the pure race bikes you're dropping down and stretching out at the front so there we go so just for good measure I thought I would chuck in the Merida Sculptura Endurance this is from the video I made the other day and I thought it'd be interesting to see how this stacks up fairly well priced against the canyon because it is di2 so that's a bonus actually quite a bit higher up at the front than the canyon as we can see there and also stretched out a bit more at the back but also what's interesting about the merida is how high they have the bottom bracket on their endurance bike I find it a bit peculiar canyon is a fairly conservative 73 and the merida which seems pretty high to me, even for a full race bike, is 66. Okay, moving on. James said, we'd like to see how the Cervelo Caledonia 5 measures up against these, which is the lightweight race bike with integrated cables and more aero features. Now, looking at the Caledonia 5, I would suggest this is more of an endurance bike than a race bike, which we can see here by comparing it to the Canyon. So fairly similar geometry there. In fact, the Cervelo has got a very long wheelbase. See that front wheel moving forwards? That's quite quite long bike. And actually, if you compare it to Cervelo's S-Series bike, and I don't know what happened to the S3. It now appears to be the S-Series. found that a bit confusing. You can see the difference there between the sort of second-tier aero race bike from Cervelo and then the Caledonia 5. So again, Caledonia is a lot longer, higher up at the front. And actually the S-Series is actually quite high at the front really for a race bike. Because if you actually compare that against the SL7 from Specialized, the Tarmac, you can see it is quite high at the front. I thought it'd be quite good fun to actually compare the Caledonia 5 to the S5, which is the full-on aero bike from Cervelo. And there you can see a massive difference there in the geometry. A very bizarre S5 bike. Which is actually being ridden by Mark Hershey for Sunweb and he's doing some pretty amazing things with it at the moment. If I overlay the S5 over the Caledonia 5, quite interesting comparison there. And then at the back, look at the difference there in the geometry. Massively long top tube. Obviously the S5 is quite a bit shorter. So as well as the Caledonia 5, Cervelo make the Caledonia, which you could imagine is just a down spec version of the Caledonia 5. But actually if we compare between the two, it is a completely different frame and fork, much more basic. None of the cable integration and a lot of the aero features are missing. Very normal seat post clamp compared to the wedged hidden away seat post clamp on the Caledonia 5. So you are getting a much more basic bike, but obviously for a cheaper price. Okay, the next comment I got was from Adel. Love your vids. Well, thank you. I think it'd be interesting to hear your take on lesser known brands offerings like Factor BH Lapierre. And then I also got a message from Andrea. Please review the new Lapierre Aero. Well, fair play. I don't do much with Lapierre bikes on my videos. This is the Zealous, I think that's how you say it, SL700 Di2. I don't think Lapierre really want to sell this bike in the UK particularly because I couldn't really find a price for this model and it's not on their website. Some bike manufacturers are great at disseminating the information and others sort of, it's like they're really not interested in selling in the UK. There we go. Lapierre's designers have brought quite a lot of flair to the frame on this bike. The seat stays split off and join the top tube around the seat post. 
presumably bringing in a bit of flex. Now this is the all-round lightweight race bike as used by the Pro Tour team FDJ. For me personally, it looks bizarre. Can't imagine myself ever wanting a bike that looked like that. However, the aero offering, the air code, this is the DRS8, and I could find a price for this one. We'll take with DI2. This is the aero bike from Lapierre. And I think this is a more interesting proposition. You've still got a bit of that design feature around the back there. Integrated cables. And this was weighed by Cycling Weekly size large, which is photographed here. And it came in at 8 kilos. So not exactly a featherweight, but there we go. Now if we compare that to the Reacto that I looked at the other day. Not a great comparison because obviously this is a large frame. This is a medium, but similar ilk of bike, I guess. Would I be going rushing out to buy one? Mm, I'm not convinced. What do you guys think of these Lapierres? Leave some comments down below, let me know what you think. Okay, so the Factor bikes. And here is the Ostro from Factor. The VAM designation on their bikes means that it's a lightweight climbing bike. As VAM measures your vertical ascent in meters per hour. So there we go. I had to look that up. And I was a bit disappointed with the pictures of the Ostro on the Factor website. I don't know why with all this modern technology we have, the bike manufacturers are able to put amazing photos on their websites. And yet so many seem to just put these dirgy, blurred little JPEGs on, which I find really frustrating. I couldn't find any weights for this bike. And I think you order it via the website and choose your components so I think this was an example price of what you could get. In other news I actually bought some Goodyear Eagle F1s the other day. I got the 28 tubeless version. Put them on my race bike which usually has the GP5000 TLs on but in a 25. Now obviously I bought the 28s in the Goodyears but people have been saying how 28s can be just as quick as the 25s. Personally I found them to be slower. I found them quite draggy up the hills. Where they did feel really good was downhill. They felt very stable downhill but as soon as I got home that day I took them off. I'm going to put them on my winter bike and uh, I put my GP 5000s back on which because they're tubeless was an absolute palaver. There we go. And then the BH bike well, is fading between the Factor and the BH G8 disc 7.5. Again, another one of these manufacturers that don't seem to want to sell it to the UK particularly because I couldn't find a price, couldn't find a weight. Um, what is interesting about this bike is they spec it with the Access Group set uh, except with an FSA crank set. Now, that clearly isn't the Access chain, so I'm not quite sure how that all works out. Just looking at the spec on the website, it does have the 12-speed cassette on it and weirdly enough, it actually says that it has the SRAM chain and the SRAM crank set but we're looking at it here and it's the FSA crank set so don't know what's going on there and obviously the BH has got a whole bunch of spaces in there lifting up the front end but what is interesting about this is the Reacto that I looked at the other day has got the same handlebars which is interesting because that means that the integration going on here between the Merida and the BH is less bespoke than the other manufacturers that I've seen so far so getting spares and stuff presumably in years to come will be easier maybe so moving on Joshua can you do the new Scott Addict RC and foil necks? I can't find any reviews on YouTube. Cheers. Well, when I looked these up, I already had the 2020 version of the Addict RC Ultimate in my library, which is this one. So I didn't think I'd have to line this one up again, but then I realized that Scott had released the 2021 versions of the Addict RC. So this is now the Ultimate. I think that paint job is an improvement for sure. Never been a fan of these psychedelic stickers. Apart from that, the wheels look like they've changed from the 202 zips to the 303. But that's a bit of a downgrade because that's the NSW and that's the Firecrest. However, we do now have a power meter because this is a pretty whoppingly expensive bike. But nice and light at 6.9 kilograms. Now then, compare that to the foil. Here we go, the new 2021 foil from Scott. This is the Pro, coming in a nice chunk cheaper than the uh, Addict Ultimate. Similar paint job, but clearly very different up the front end here. The foil more like the Batmobile. Pretty funky, pretty aero I guess. All pretty different between the two models, but 
as far as the geometry numbers not a huge amount in it there we go at some point i will do a range video for the foil and the addict because i'm pretty fond of these bikes so i will look at all the different price points bdh fantastic any chance you will do giant propel and try to find out the differences between the 20 and the 21 versions among other things well here's the 2020 propel advanced pro zero disc and looking on the website, the UK website, there are no new released 2021 Giant Propels. However, a quick look on the International Giant website and you'll see the 21 Propels pop up. This is fading between the 21 and the 2020. Couldn't find a price for the new one. And I don't know whether this will change for the UK, but the 2020 UK version of the Pro Zero had the force etap access group set whereas on the international website for 2021 it's got the di2 on it altegra but with regard to the frame and fork and all that malarkey it all looks exactly the same and sadly so does this giant wellington boot holding the handlebars on i'd have really liked to have seen something different here perhaps you could stick those vision handlebars on off the reacto but probably not if anybody's come up with a cool way of replacing the stem on a propel that would be quite interesting put it in the comments down below okay and here's my last comment for today in this video great video as always i'm trying to decide between an aero bike or one of the new all-rounders including the amanda tarmac orca etc etc or would i be best off going for the merida equivalent which would in reality be the reacto force edition well here's the reacto force edition now dewey then sent me another comment where he said that he lived in snowdonia so snowdonia i'm guessing it's pretty hilly around there so i would have to question the reacto really because this is more of an aero bike not exactly light so with regard to whether you should get the tarmac well if you wanted to get a sram force etap tarmac this is the one you'd be looking at, the SL7 Pro, but it's six and a half thousand pounds in comparison to four and a half for the Force Edition Reacto. So that's a massive jump in price. And the irony of this, of course, is the Tarmac has only got half the gears on it and they still want that insane money. It does have a power meter there. The upshot of all that, though, is that it comes in at a pretty cool low weight as measured by GC Performance. But if you were thinking that price was insane, you could drop down on the SL7 to the Expert. It is an electric DI2 group set still. Still pretty expensive, but I think the drawback of this bike is the wheels are going to be pretty dirge. So you'd probably want to leave something in your budget to get a better set of wheels for this bike. So that's the catch there. So then you mentioned the Amanda was next on your list. And if you wanted to go for the SRAM Force ETAP Access Amanda, it's the SL7 ETAP, which actually comes in quite similar color to the Merida. Well, a little bit and the catch here is it's obviously more expensive a little bit lighter I've got to say i'm a bit disappointed at this price point and this weight for what is supposed to be a super lightweight climbing bike with aero features and integrated cabling so the integrated cabling system is not as good as the upper end demanders and it's pretty heavy really isn't it for that type of money in which case maybe you drop down to the sl7 which is the old tegra di2 bit cheaper not massively cheaper a little bit lighter comes in a very bright orange color so maybe you drop down even further to the sl6 pro slightly better price well quite a better price in the realms of reality compare that to the sl7 the difference is it's obviously a mechanical group set old tegra and we're coming in at eight kilos so really heavy perhaps you can change out the wheels and save some weight i have looked around on the internet but i'm struggling to find the full specs for these wheels but presumably that's where a bit of the weight's going to be so in answer to your question should you get the reacto the tarmac the tarmac the amanda the amanda the amanda well it's a good question for that type of money none of these are actually uh, as light as i'd like them to be so as ever when buying a new bike there's a lot of variables involved and you really do have to weigh up all the different things that you want your bike for before you can choose naturally in this day and age bike stocks seem to be incredibly low so it actually comes down to a bit of which ones you can actually get your hands on as well so dewey good luck with that and uh, let me know which bike that you uh, decide to get i think if i had to choose i'd probably get this one and work out how to save some weight on it probably the wheels so there we go i hope i've answered some of your questions there and uh, and leave some questions down below and this week i shall try and do another video and try and compare some more bikes that that you request to have a look at if you like this video give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel